Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve literal equations um, when we kind of have some extra steps. So it's just not as simple as pinning a variable, isolating it, and solving, and then you're done. These are going to involve a little bit extra steps. So it's really um, you know, kind of the purpose here is for my Algebra 2 kind of students. Um, all right, so the main important thing, though, when solving literal equations is, again, a lot of times literal equations are going to involve multiple variables. Um, this one actually doesn't, but it's a good. Uh, Actually, that one has an x, actually. Let me put that in there. OK, so the main important thing, though, is for each problem, we want to know what variable we are. Now, the pinning purpose, as I mentioned, these kind of involve extra steps. And you can see, actually, I have multiple variables of what I'm actually solving for, except for that one, except for that one, except for that one. So you could actually use the pinning for this. But when you have multiple of the variables, pinning is not always going to be your best option. Um, so I'm actually going to solve these, assuming that you already watched my first video. I'm going to solve these. I'm going to explain it like I'm pinning, but I'm actually not going to circle the variable and leave it there. Um, and of course, for the ones that have multiple of those variables, that's not really going to be your best way anyways, because you're going to have to combine the variable that you're solving for. All right. So the first thing, though, again, you can see here we have a y and an x, but we're solving for y. So therefore, I want to undo all of my operations. Now, this one gets a little bit confusing because students know, oh, well, we look at what's happening to our variable. Well, our variable is being multiplied by negative 1 half, and it's also being added by 3x. So we have to undo adding 3x first, right? Well, we can't subtract 3x, though, on both sides because that negative 3, that 3x is also being multiplied by negative 1 half. So we have two options. We can either distribute, that means multiply the negative 1 half by y, and multiply the negative 1 half by 3x and then use our inverse operations. Or we can just undo multiplying by 1 negative 1 half. So I'm going to choose to undo multiplying by negative 1 half, because I don't want to distribute, nor do I want really some fractions. So to undo multiply again by fraction would be divide or multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by negative 2 over 1 on both sides. By doing that, that goes to, um, that multiplies to give me 1, which is just left with y plus 3x. You can keep it in your parentheses, but it's not being multiplied by anything else. So now I can get rid of the parentheses. And then that's going to equal negative 2 over 1 times 5 is going to give me a negative 10. Now I can simply just use my inverse operations to solve for y. So you can see my y is being added by 3x. So to undo adding 3x, I'm going to subtract a 3x on both sides. Now remember when subtracting, we want the variable to be in front of the constant. And we cannot subtract a variable from a constant. So my final answer is going to be y equals negative 3x minus 10. Um, whenever we're dealing with fractions, we like to get rid of fractions. And that's why I said, you know, you could have distributed this and then dealt with fractions. But why? Who wants to deal with fractions? So the best thing that I always like to do, um, the best thing that I, what, I have, what I would have liked to do is get rid of the fractions. And that's why I multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. In this example, we're solving for y. But y is being divided by x. 2 is also being divided by x. So I want to get rid of dividing by x. I don't want to be dividing by x anymore because that's creating this fraction or this rational um, expression. So to undo dividing by x, I am going to now multiply by x. And it's really multiplied by x over 1. So I'm going to multiply by x over 1 on both sides. Well, multiplying and dividing by x is going to divide to 1. So I'm left with y plus 2 equals when you multiply x over 1 times 3, that's really 3 over 1 times x over 1. So you just multiply across 3x over 1, which is just 3x. Now I can solve by seeing my variables being added by 2. So to undo adding 2, I'm going to subtract 2. Therefore, I'm left with y equals 3x minus 2. The next example gets a little confusing. Um, because now we want to solve for y. But you can see y is now in the denominator. So Again, just going back to your thinking, get rid of fractions. Whatever you're dividing by, multiply. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply by y minus 2 on both sides. By doing that, I'm left with 3 equals p times y minus 2. Now again, we're trying to solve for y. Well, y, again, now we're in another problem. We can't just solve for y here because y is being multiplied by p. So since p is not a fraction here, um, well, actually, you could just divide it out. Um, yeah, let's just go and do that. So instead of distributing this, which you could do, distribute the p and then solve, um, let's just undo divide, multiplying by p. So let's divide by p. By doing that, I'm left with 3 divided by p equals y minus 2. 
Now you can see my variable is being subtracted by 2. So to undo that, I need to add 2. Therefore, my final answer, I'm going to leave y on the left-hand side. I'm just going to switch them around. So y equals 3 over p. Now I can't combine 2 to that, so I'm just going to add 2 at the end. All right, so now let's get into the difficult, the fun ones. All right, And these are all going to be literal equations with more than one variable. Um, so again, the kind of the same thing, just like when we were doing multi-step equations with more than one variable, we got to combine that. We got to. We have to combine the variables into one. And this becomes the most confusing because, well, you're subtracting. You can't subtract. They're not like terms, right? One's being multiplied by r. One's being multiplied by negative s. We can't combine them. They're not like terms. So how can we simplify them so it's just one variable? Well, what we can do is actually think about this the other way. We can't combine them. We can't combine them together because they're not like terms. However, both of these terms share the y. So what I can do is factor out the y basically divide each of these by y. And when I factor out the y, I'm left with an r minus s. Now, that works again, because if you were to use distributive property the other way, you do y times r, y times negative s, which would take you back. So by factoring, all I'm doing is rewriting, it, rewriting the expression that I previously had, but as a, as a product, as a multiplication problem. It's now y times r minus 7. Well, now we look at our y, which we're trying to solve for, and say, all right, well, what's happening to our y that we need to undo? My y is being multiplied by r minus s. So to undo that, I need to divide by r minus s, right? We wrote that's now a product. So to undo the product, you need to divide. So I'm going to divide by r minus s on both sides. So in doing that, that now goes to 1. And I'm left with y equals t divided by r minus s. Um, in the next example here, I can't factor them out like I did before. Um, but what you can see is um, I have variables on the left and on the right side. So the main important thing that I want to do is get the variables on the same side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bx. I'm just actually, let's get the dx over here. I'm going to get all the variables to the left-hand side, the variable that I'm solving for, which is the x. Right? I'm solving for x. I want to isolate the x. So I'm going to get the x on the left-hand side because we like solving on the left-hand side. So I'm going to add a dx. You could solve on the right side as well. The problem with doing this, not really the problem, but the thing you have to understand is, again, negative bx and positive dx are not like terms. Yes, the x's are the same, but the negative b and d are not. So we cannot combine them. So we're left with a minus bx plus dx equals c. So all I really did from the first step to the second was I got the dx from the right side to the left side. Now, I could use, but now what I can do is, again, I need to combine these. Well, I can't add them, or you know, like I did here, subtraction. But what I can do is I can factor out the x. But before I do that, I'm going to get the a to the other side. Because remember, we're trying to solve for x on the left-hand side. That means I want nothing else except for x on the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract an a on both sides. Therefore, I'm left with a negative bx plus dx equals c minus a. Now I can factor out the x. By factoring out the x, I'm left with a negative b plus d equals c minus a. Now you can see my variable x is being multiplied by this expression. So I am going to divide by negative b plus d. And my final answer is going to be x equals c minus a divided by negative b plus d. OK, last example, almost there. So on this last example, um, we need to solve for y. Now, kind of like we had here, my y is being multiplied by a variable. Now, here, I just had one of them. So I divided both sides by p. Well, you could do that. You could divide both sides by a and both sides by b, right? But sometimes that can just kind of be a little bit more confusing. So in this example, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm going to multiply you out and then simplify from there. Okay, there's multiple ways to solve for the problems. So if I multiply my a, I'm left with an ay plus ac equals by minus bc. Now again, we're solving for y. So now this problem looks exactly like I had for this problem. I need to solve for y. So I'm going to get the y variable. I'm going to get the variables, the expressions, with, or the terms with y all on the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract the by. Again, they're not like terms, so we can't combine them. So it's ay minus by plus
plus AC equals a negative BC. Now I'm going to get rid of the AC, or at least put it on the right-hand side. Then, in the same respect, I'm also going to factor out a y on both sides. So by factoring out a y, I'm left with a minus b equals a negative bc minus ac. Now, lastly, you can see that my y is being divided by a minus b, or being multiplied. So to undo that, I need to divide by a minus b. And what I'm left with is y equals negative bc minus ac divided by a minus b. Now, before I end the video, it's very important. We always like to simplify, right? If you're dividing by something that's the same in the numerator and denominator, you can divide them into one or simplify them. So a lot of students will look at this and say, oh, the a's can divide out or the b's can divide out. Well, the problem is you cannot divide them out across addition or subtraction. So you can see that these terms are separated by subtraction. So therefore, we cannot just divide out the b's or divide out the a's. That only works when they're separated by multiplication, not across your distance subtraction. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, this is your final answer. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve literal equations with multiple steps. Thanks.